guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And um, this is a video now, um, part of the book build. I'm not going to call it part 9, 10 or whatever. This is the missile build. So basically we've got our missile halves here glued together, as you can see. And I've got one with the parts dry fitted just to see how it all goes together. Um, so we can see from the instructions, we've basically got two main halves. We've got an exhaust cone. We've got two fins going in here, two fins going in here, and this little insert in here. And the fit of it all is, well, impeccable. Um, it's fantastic. You can see here these these fins, they kind of, this all just press fitted in. Um, those fins there, you can hear them clip out. They fit really, really well. And then that piece there, if I drop it, there we go. Um, that piece there fits into that recess. It's got a little leg on it there that goes in that hole and it fits absolutely beautifully. You can see. Now I'm going to go around with some Mr. Surfacer to just do the seams and then go over the alcohol and rub it out. But um, And I'll show you all of that if you're new to the hobby. The other thing we need to do is when we put this exhaust cone in, you can see it goes in and it sort of sinks down inside. We've got this seam you can see here. This, this mould seam either side and we want to get rid of that because it's these are a very prominent part of the model they're sort of sat right on the top um, as you can see there even if you have it in the in the you know transport position you they're they're, they're actually the first thing you're going to see so um, and we've also got painting instructions for them um, this is um, what they're calling out for here for the colours if you want to get some paints ready is um, the actual body they're calling for MC235, which is light grass green. Now, I think that's a sort of Russian field green. Um, looking at images, you can just sort of paint them what colour you want, really, as long as they're green. Um, I mean, some of them are all white. If you look, one of these uh, has the, the missiles all white. You could have a mixture if you like, I guess. But I'm going to do some research and select a paint that I think looks best. But what I'm actually looking for is a very, very matte um, very, very sort of field green like this. Very much like the colour you paint the um, the wheels on a, on a Russian aircraft. So, uh, yeah, that's what they're calling for. They're calling for the green on there. And then in, in the um, exhaust cone, there's obviously going to be a cap in there. And that's, they're calling for a red-brown colour, which is 237, which is, yeah, red-brown. So that's going to be like a whole red colour. So, um, but in the meantime, I'll do some research and then I'll tell you what colours I'm using. So let's get back to the manual where we're going to glue the missiles together where are we here so i've got the i've got the halves glued together and um, basically i've sanded down the joints now if you look over here stand up so you can see so make sure you can see what i'm looking at um if you look here we've got some little dimples catching the light you can see there a little dimple there and then there's another one there. Excuse my nails guys, I've been working on the Land Rover again. Um, so those dimples form part of the seam. So what I've done, I've put a good layer of Mr. Surface in there and then I'm going to sand it back and then I'm going to go over it with some alcohol so it achieves that dimple because probably when we sand it, it will just become flat. Now I want to make sure that I don't have any steps or anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over with a pencil I'm not going to use a pen because um, I want to make sure it doesn't come through. So what this is doing now, when I, when I come to sand this, I'm going to use this 800 grit sponge. So I'm just going to go over like this and make sure that when I sand it, I don't end up with a step. Now what I'm basically looking for is if the parts have been put together like this, you could sand this away and end up with a, with a join still. So. What I'm doing is making sure I don't end up with a step and you can see that I'm using a sponge so it's not going to end up with any flats and I'm also turning the missile while I sand it and I'm keeping the sander at about 45 degrees. Now we've got some detail here so I need to make sure I stay away for that. A good way to do it is just put your thumb there and then you can sand up to your thumb and you know you're not going to sand away any of that detail. Okay. And then you can do the same the other way around. Now this sponge is becoming a bit fat for this, although it's okay actually for now. What I was going to say is if you, if you get, need to get um, into a thin area, you can use one of these flory skinny sponges. They're very, very soft and pliable and they're brilliant for getting into 
the little tight areas if you need to. So, and also make sure the sander doesn't go too much over that edge. You want to keep that sharp profile on the front of that part there. And then we can come down here and just sand away, I'm not pushing at all and letting the sander do the work. Now you can see we've got a bit of a step there. If I put some pencil there, it'll make it apparent. When I sand it, you can see the sand, the pencil's left on the right hand side as you're looking at the pencil's left on the right hand side of the line. So just going to do some more sanding there. Perhaps come in with a knife, just give it a little scrape just to sharpen up that corner. And there we go. So that's that scene done there. Now down in here we've got this detail. So once again, I'm going to use the knife and just scrape. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just using the end of the knife to scrape the the plastic up to that raised detail. And you will see that the shiny part where the glue is will disappear. OK, when we give them a prime, this, this will stick out like a sore thumb if there's any problems. Just go in there and sand all that away. You can turn it in your fingers and if it's got any lumps and bumps in it, you'll feel it. Okay, and then I'm going to take a scriber, use my uh, Tamiya P cutter, and where these seams are, I'm just going to run over like so, just to remove the the seam from in that groove. You can tip the scriber sideways, whatever. Oops. Okay, so that's that done. Now we've got a, a sort of very positive line there. So what I'm going to do here is come in with a sander, put my thumb there and just, and then do the same the other way round. And that will just help us to ensure we've got a, a sort of nice step there where it goes from a cone into a cylinder. All right. And this is all just basic, simple modeling skills. This is the bit where when people build tanks and they get all sort of panicky because they've got a two-piece barrel, gun barrel. Um, I, I never worry about it because it's it's basic modeling skills. And if you keep an eye on this channel, I will be, the, the next build I will be doing will be part of um, Motti's military models group build. And I'm going to build that Meng Magak 6. And that's got a two-piece barrel with a very, very complex um, a very very complex shape because it's got all the bags down it with all the straps and everything then having said that i said i wasn't going to put any aftermarket on it i was going through my dragon m60 and i discovered i'd bought a barrel for it so i have actually got a barrel um which is resin and it's got all the um the separate photo etch straps and everything so i may well use that but i will do the standard kit barrel as well so you guys can see right so there we go and then again i'm going to come in with a knife and just sharpen up where the seam goes into that detail and that's a good little tip when you've got a seam going up to an edge just to scrape it across don't put the blade directly in line with the seam because it'll go in it just a little slow angle away from the seam and just scrape, just scrape the plastic. Just to make sure. And then if you really, really want to go to town, you can take a piece of fine emery. This is 1200 so not emery wet and dry. And just go around like this and just go around. And that, if you've got any ovality or anything or any lumps and bumps, that will help sort of take it out. And there you go. That's the, that's the nose cone part done. And as I say, when we prime it, we can have a good look and see what it looks like. So we've got another bit of raised detail there. So once again, I'm going to use my thumb. That's I'll scrape up to it first. And we can see here, if I use the pencil again, I mean, I basically use the pencil for you guys. It's uh, you can see as you're rubbing, 
I'm keeping it straight because I don't want to run into that um, detail here. I don't want to run into that either. But as you're rubbing, you can see where the sanding is taking effect. There we go. And then I'm going to come down to here. I've got the sanding stick on an angle now so that I don't touch that. Or I could come in with my skinny stick and then I know that I'm not, I've got more control because I know that I'm not going to run into it. And then again with the knife, keep it an angle away from the joint, gently rub across it like so. Just like that. Okay, and there we go, that's that done. And once again, coming with the scriber. And you can see on this side, we've got a bit of a misalignment in that line. So I may need to put something there, but um, just see if I can follow it. In fact, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use a saw. Where is my saw? There it is. Saws are very good for uh, re-establishing lines that are gone. What I'm gonna do here is just push the saw through the groove and it will straighten out any step that's there. I've got to be very careful. Again, I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm letting this all do the work. It feels a bit blunt actually. I think this blade needs changing. I've been using it to cut metal rods. And then I can come in with the scriber, pushing the scriber rather than pulling it. The scriber is much, le much, much <laughs> the scriber is much less likely to jump out of the line if you push it rather than pull it. If you pull it and there's a problem, it will jump out. Whereas if you push it, it's much better. And then what you can do, you can come along with some extra thin. Don't use the um, quick setting. Use the uh, ordinary extra thin and just brush some over where you've been sanding and, and stuff and that will make that one ring and it will just you, you won't see any seam in it whatsoever and if there's any sanding marks or anything it takes them out so there we go that's that cone done now we can see there that it looks like we've still got some sanding to do um, I'm a little concerned that it may be that we need a bit more glue in that joint so I'm just gonna get my pencil yeah, we can see we've still got a raised area in the middle. That's why we've got that funny looking surface. There we go. So now what I need to do is get all the others done and then uh, I'll come back. All right, so I've done three of them now and I'll just uh, show you how they go together. Uh, lovely lovely fit with these what I would suggest is um, there's a mold seam all down here there's also a mold seam on these sand them off so it looks better when it's uh, painted and also on the bottom here you've got some sprue nibs just quickly with a hard stick like this Infini Matador stick just just take off those sprue nibs and also just put a bit of an angle on the front of there so that when you slide this in it's um it's a very good fit it's quite a tight fit so it just slots in then like so if you don't put that on it, it tends to not want to go in because it's such a perfect fit it's a perfect length so I'm just gonna get this to go in here which is easier said than done and then push that along into the back nice and tight and then just push the front down in like so and that's that glued in I sort of have pressed in like that these little fillet parts go in, a little bit of a warp on them, give them a little tweak, get them to sit flat. These little fins go in the back and there again, they're a pretty tight fit. If it won't go on one side, try it on the other because one hole is bigger than the other. And then, same again here, push that one in there. And there we go, and I'm going to use the quick setting just, just so that it, uh, so we can line it all up and we know it's not going to move. 
Don't seem to be getting any glue on the brush. So there we go. So they're glued in. Let me make sure they're nice and square. Like Thor. And then again with the quick setting, I'm just going to run a brush full down there. Run some in down there. Down the other side. You need to glue these on both sides, otherwise the cylinder will uh, will move around because remember it's a slot going right through. And just run some down in there. down in there. Give them a little nudge in. Don't go pushing them too hard, you don't want glue oozing out everywhere. Or molten plastic should I say. Just gonna put some more on there. Help them settle in. And there we go. So that's now all four missiles built up. Like that. And what we need to do is um, now go over everything with some Mr. Servicer. Now where these where these fins join in, you can see there's a bit of a gap here at the front. So if I can point it out with the cocktail stick down here. So we're going to put some Mr. Servicer down there. And then once that's gone off after sort of, you know, 10 hours or something, we'll come in with some alcohol and just um, a cotton bud and just go around and, and, and rub it all out. So I'll get some Mr. Servicer on there now. You don't need to watch me painting that. And... Um, Oh, the other thing we need to do is get some in around the back, around this tail cone, because we've got those uh, seams around there, and then when we put the exhaust in, it will show up. So we don't want that, do we? So I'll get some Mr. Servicer on here now, and then I'll come back in 10 or 12 hours when I'm ready to uh, do the alcohol bit. Right, here we are back, and this is um, 48 hours later. <laughs> so yeah, I got busy on the Land Rover because the weather was nice, um, hence my dirty nails, I'm sorry. Um, right, so Mr. Surfacer is on, and obviously in the time that it's been on there, it's all dry. And I'm probably going to regret this because um, the longer you leave it, the harder it is to get off. So I'm going to use a pretty hot um, um, thinner, and this is the Real Colors High Compatibility Thinner. It's not quite as hot as the um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinners, but it's uh, it, nonetheless it's still pretty hot. So if you if you do it quickly, like within a, you know within a couple of hours, you can use alcohol, but um, yeah, you need something a bit hotter if you're going to um, if you're going to leave it for a while. So all we need is a, an armament of cotton buds, and uh, we don't need tweezers, and a um, and our thinner. And all I'm going to do is dip the cotton bud in the thinner. Okay. Now the experienced modelers among you have seen this millions of times. Like for instance, this here, this little recessed area here. Um, there's a seam around one side of it and on both ends because it's sort of moulded into one half. So. If I sand it, I'll end up with Mr. Servicer left in the recess, but I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is just rub this with the whole coin. You can see, oh, it's coming off a lot easier than I thought it would. You can see it's, um, it's come away and all it's done is it's left, I'll just dry it off. You don't need to dry it off, but I will. It's just left the Mr. Servicer in the recesses. Okay, same here. There's a bit of a, bit of a recess in there. And then we've got the ends of these, um, these fins, we'll just give them a, a rub and that will come away and as you can see the certain areas of it are tougher than others if it is a bit tough what you can do is just come along wet it all okay just get it all wet and let the let the thinners do its thing and then you can come back afterwards and rub it it'll just it'll just go on and sort of start to penetrate a bit and soften it up okay we'll do the same on that side Leave them as the surfacer in the recesses. And I know that James Mower would be watching this and making a comment because uh, he absolutely loves seeing me use Mr. Surfacer, don't you, James? I know you do. And he wants to see me use it on my Land Rover, and I will. I promise. I'll use it somewhere. So there we go. We can just rub away like that. Now, there are... There are different ways of using Mr. Servicer. Obviously, you can do it this way, and this is the way to use it if you just want to do what I'm doing here. And what I'm doing is filling a recess, like with these with these um, indentations. You can see there's an indentation in the plastic there. Well, that indentation there falls on a seam line. So if I just sand that, I'll end up with no indentation. So I'm rubbing over it with alcohol, 
and then what it's doing is it's all with thinner should I say and what it's doing is removing the Mr. Surfacer so that I end up with a dimple rather than just a flat you can see that bit that one there is sanded and you can't really see much of a dimple there in fact I can see that I've got a bit of a seam there to still to deal with so if we just rub that with the alcohol with the thinners we can see that what happens we end up with a dimple because it removes the Mr. Surfacer from the surface okay so that's pretty much that now sometimes you will find as you rub this away you get air holes which is annoying which means you have to go over it again and one of the um, downsides I and mean, it's a great thing that they've gone away from plastic stems on cotton buds because you know one use plastic and all that so it's uh, it's good to get rid of it where appropriate but um the trouble is when they're with these paper buds they go really soft and, and gooey on the ends so you end up using a lot more than you normally would but you know hey they're they're hardly expensive and my advice is to you is um if you are in the uk don't buy the cheap supermarket cotton buds buy the genuine johnson's cotton buds um these are actually cheap supermarket ones and you can see they're all furry and fluffy and you end up with bits of fluff everywhere I find the actual genuine Johnson's ones to be a lot better. So yeah, I bought the Johnson's ones, obviously I got the pot. Then I actually went and bought the, the cheap Tesco ones, which are like a quarter of the price, but they're rubbish. So you're better off getting the proper, the proper Johnson's ones. And if you have still got some of the old nylon shafted cotton buds, I mean, you can still get them on Amazon. You can get them with bamboo cane and all. Um, if you have still got some, save them for doing this don't use them up for you know wicking up um super glue and stuff save them for this because this is where they they, they need this is where you need a, a decent quality a decent quality shaft should i say you can see i've got this really wet now because i want the i want the mr servicer to really get attacked break it down and again you see what we're doing here is we're removing the Mr. Surfacer and you can see that this band this is a raised band running around you can see the same here and what we're doing is we're recreating that on the end of that part which is that inlay there so I'll go on and get all these done and then I'll come back in the meantime what I will do is just explain for the newer modelers out there the reason I'm doing this is so that I end up with not removing any detail. This is really good if you've got rivets around or something. Now here we've got a seam. So if I rub it, if I rub this with alcohol now, all I'll do is recreate the seam. So what I want to do is get one of my skinny sanding sticks, like so, and just go over and just sand away. And the reason I put it on there is because there was some evidence of a seam left. So if you sand, you will sand the area flat okay and remove the mr servicer around the, the seam and the, the mr servicer will act as a filler in that seam now that's the two differences alcohol is used for removing it when you want to leave the detail you can see i've got some air holes there which i may do something about because that's actually the bottom of the missile in fact i will do it because if they're in the raised position you'll be able to see that so I will deal with that so just have to put another application on um, and there we go so I'll get these all done and sanded and then I'll come back when we're ready to put some primer on them right here we go so we've got our um, our missiles painted now I've done the exhaust parts what I've done this is just a piece of wood and it's a roll of blue tack and I stick parts on to paint them as you can see and it's a really good way of holding your parts um, if, if you you know if you've got like on these a face on the back face that isn't going to be seen so that's a, that's a good way of doing it so they're painted with uh, XF9 yeah XF9 hole red um, over the black primer so that's given them that sort of good look these are primed in the um, MIG one shot primer I would have used my new MRP primer sent to me from premium hobbies but um, Today the weather has been blowing a gale and, and stuff, so I couldn't have the window open. So I thought I'd use this uh, this this primer here. Um, 
as you can see the seams are all looking good we can see around the back end we can't see any seams or anything so we're ready to start adding some color now if we look at the color call outs you can see here it's calling for this color here which is a stainless steel color for that band around there and also for these tail fins now i was going to use the mr color uh, metalizer paint but i thought i'd give this um, this a go instead this is the model air steel 71065 and i've thinned it 30 percent with um the aho thinners so we'll see what it's like uh, i'm spraying it roughly 18 psi and obviously this would normally go over if you're after a real sheen you would go over a gloss coat but i don't want a real sheen i want it to look like a dull metal color so we'll just see how it looks when it's painted on here and then we can mask this off and um and then we can and then we can take the rest of the color on I don't think I've ever actually airbrushed this before. It's um, it's quite nice. I bought it for um, this particular Vallejo paint and the aluminium on the um, recommendation of Paul from ISM because it's a uh, it's fantastic on the brush as a as a metallic paint for using on the brush. It's it's brilliant. It's one of the best. I've got a bit of a puddle problem going on there. So I have to probably rub that down and do it again unless it dries out fine. So we'll just put some more around here. And that should do us. I can stand that up now and let that dry. Let that dry overnight. And then we'll do this. This one here. It's very much like it, it sprays very much like the um the Mr. Hobby metallics. It's kind of all or nothing. You you, you pull the nozzle back and you pull the needle back and nothing happens and all of a sudden you get like a flood of paint. It's finding that balance between having it thin that it sprays well but so thin that it's just like water. So I'm happy with that. I mean they, they wouldn't be um, mint anyway. They would have a an effect. In fact I didn't around the front did I on that one. Let's just go around this band. You can see there particularly it just flooded out of the out of the nozzle. Maybe my airbrush needs a proper clean. And I'm in this day and age with the all the new metalizer paints that are out there. You you, you kind of pays your money, you take your choice. But um, you know, with these, I'm not actually after a perfect finish. I want it to look like dull, sort of slightly weathered stainless steel. I don't want it to have a polished look. It's not like a a model car or a motorbike or something. I want it to have a, a a kind of uncared for look if you like I certainly won't be trying to polish it put it that way so just go over and give them one more quick coat just to make sure there's plenty on there because when I mask it it might pull some of it away so I'll get that done and then I'll come back with some more painting for you right so here we are this is uh, another day now it's Monday and I've done the silver as we saw in the last video. When I was off camera, I went over with some of this MRP Super Clear Semi Matte Varnish and um, just went over just to seal the silver in because I'm not sure how well it's going to respond to the masking tape. Let's just give it a go and see what's going to happen in an area that we're not going to be worried about. If I put that on there and give it a good hard rub, it doesn't affect it at all. So. The MRP Super Clear has sealed it in and it's not going to come away. So now what I need to do is mask off this ring here and I need to mask off these fins and then we can paint the rest of the missiles. And those cones obviously going to be white and this is going to be black, uh, uh, green, sorry. 
What I'm going to do before I do the colours, I'm just going to go over with some matte black just to, or some extra dark green or something, just to um, give it a, there's a bit of um, something on there. Just rub that out. Um, just to give it a constant sort of colour so that when I put the green on, if I decide to put it on like thin and use this as a pre-shade kind of thing, then I won't have the um, the bright area coming, you know, showing through. I can also see I've got a bit of a seam there, so I need to sand that out. So let me get this masked up, and then I'll come back once I've done that. And then when it comes to masking, uh, we we basically got to mask these fins in this area here to retain the the, the stainless steel look. Well, it will look like a stainless steel once it's had a, a wash and dry brushing. Um, so this is just over two, just over two millimeters wide, literally just over two millimeters wide. So we've got some choices here. I've got some of the Tamiya, the white flexible tape, which is great for doing curves and stuff. Downside to it is it's quite thick. So when you actually like go around there and then you have an overlap, you tend to get a gap in where the overlap and the paint will go under. So that's the disadvantage of using the thicker tapes. You've got these here. These are the Jammy Dog tapes. Now, this is called micro masking tape. It is quite thin, but it is very much like a normal masking tape. So um, it's nothing like as good as the Kabuki tape, which is like, your, you know, your, your, your Tamiya tape. Um, and I find it doesn't stick very well. You've also got this one here, which is the Jammy Dog Blue. Some of that vinyl on there, um, which is great. It also does does flexing to a certain extent. It's not as good as the Tamiya for, for that, but it does do it. But also, again, it's quite thick and it's it's even called low tack. It doesn't stick very well at all. So um, I tend to sort of try and stay away from these now if I can. This stuff is actually great for seat belts. Um, so now that I'm lucky that um, Ed from Premium Hobbies has sent me these Infini cutting mats, I can now use these. So I basically want a two millimeter, two millimeter wide band to go around here and I want some pieces to go on here to mask. So dead simple, what I've done, I've put my, this started off here as a piece of 10 mil masking tape. It's 35 mil long. Okay, so what I can do here is just come along one, two, so there's two millimeters there in the groove, cut down. Yeah, and then I can pick that up with the edge of my knife and then grab the tape and stick it on and stick it on <laughs> right so we start there and then we wrap it round keeping it nice and parallel between the lines okay and then we stop there and then we come back to this end just lift up that corner of the tape and then using my tweezers I'm going to make sure this end of the tape has gone between the lines as well like so and then we can come along and put that down like so so you can see now we've got that pretty much perfectly masked in between the in between the lines and it's um and it's kabuki tape we're not going to get a problem where the join is or or anything like that, we just push that down and it's job done. Now these fins on the back, I'm going to do a start here and wrap around. So I want something roughly 15 millimetres long and they're 7 millimetres tall. So I'm using the 10 millimetre wide tape. So there's 15 millimetres there. These are these are 5 mil apart, so it's 5, 10, 15. Pick up the tape with the corner. Pick it up with the tweezers. Just get it to grab that corner. And then I'm going to put this here so the join is in the middle of the vein. Because if you sort of wrap it around and have it overlapping, say it wraps around, say you start here, wrap around and then just squeeze it together, you'll end up with a, a line here that won't be painted. So we can then use our tweezers, just rub that down, go around to the other side, pull that around, get nice and parallel with the uh, tube, give that a squeeze down. Pull this side around. And then we've got our oops, we got our missile fins masked. Give it a squeeze. 
and there we are job done simple as that now I'll go on and get the rest done I've already done one got that all masked up and everything so I'll get the rest done now and then we'll come and put some darker paint on there with all the masking done we're now ready to um, paint the nose cones and they're going to be white and for this I'm going to try fine surface primer white it looks like a just sort of off white color actually so it'd be good um, so we're going to see what it's like and bearing in mind this is going down over a coat of the MIG one shot acrylic primer and then a very thin coat of um, Tamiya XF27 thinned with uh, leveling thinners so we'll see how it goes on now I've shaken the bottle a lot I've poured it in the in the uh, in the cup we'll see what it's like so let's see how it sprays obviously this is um this is Tamiya masking tape here which has been detacked on the back of my hand and this is just cheap masking tape which has been detacked again on the back of my hand so we'll have to build this up very slowly it's no good trying to flood it on what I'll do is I'll put on a couple of coats, let it go off. In fact, it should be so no, I can't put them down. I thought it might be safe to put them down on the sides, but it's not. So I'll put on a couple of thin coats. Just let it build up, really. Uh, spraying white is always a problem, but I always find that, believe it or not, putting a very dark colour or black beneath it gives it a lot more depth a lot more body um, the, the, the same is done in pretty much in the automotive a lot of um, a lot of the more professional you know the metal metal flake or the metallic white paints they they put them over a very dark primer base it gives them depth it is very smelly this paint I'm gonna have to come off camera in a minute and go in my booth and do this I think we can see there that it's building up very very slowly it's spraying absolutely beautifully I must admit it's um I think this is going to become my go-to primer this MRP stuff because it is very good I just wish it wasn't so bloody smelly so this is the second coat on here so that first coat should be dry by now or pretty much dry There we go, we can see building it up. Now I'm going to go off camera and do this in the booth with the window open because, um, because of the smell. And there we go, there's the, um, there's the front of the noses of the more painted white. You can see I've got them stood on my Tamiya stand here. The, um, the MRP white primer is lovely. It goes on with a very, very smooth finish. Um, it's almost got like a satiny finish to it which is extremely realistic uh, it did take a lot of coats to cover but then that's one of the things with white um, and the thing to remember is if you want to get a nice sort of evenly finished like this with white paint you do need to take your time and lay it down thin and just keep on building it up and building it up and building it up don't try and cover it all in one and because it was a dark color underneath you can see it's got that depth to it it's it's, it's really solid white rather than just a you know even when you look at it against a piece of white paper it's it's got a kind of depth it's it's it, it's i don't know how to explain it you can kind of it, the, the white paper is almost kind of translucent in comparison it makes it solid and that's because it's got that very dark green or even black underneath it so um i'm going to leave those now for at least 24 hours before i do anything else because now i've got to mask those and paint the rest of the missiles um i also put some dots of green in the exhaust there as you can see i've got some reference photos that show the the green in them if you can pick that out in there yeah you can um so yeah i just put a drop of paint over the brush and moved it around a bit i'll put a wash in there to sort of tidy it up and here we are 24 hours later another 24 hours later this video is is spanning over about four or five days at the moment so um as you can see i've masked up the the front of the well, the noses where they were white basically take your tamiya masking tape Put it on the back of your hand a couple of times, detack it, wrap it round, and then I've got some cheap masking tape over the top so I can hold them to paint them. Um, and now when we come on to the subject of paint, we need to look at what colour we're going to choose. Well, <clears throat> the instructions call for MC235, which is basically um, an AK colour for Meng, 
and I've got that one here part of the set and it's like grass green never used this before uh, I had to give it a really good stir it was about half an inch of sediment in the bottom so I've given it a really good stir and a really good shake and I'll probably give it some more as well unfortunately with these plastic bottles I can't get my stirrer down through the top so that's a shame um, but basically that's ready to go um, so we've got a choice here. We need to get these missiles painted this sort of Russian green. I call it undercarriage green. It's like the same colour as the wheels on Russian jet fighters. And I've got here a Russian modern green, which is, again, the right sort of colour. I've got a NATO green, which is, <laughs> to all intents and purposes, pretty much the same. And then I've got here field grey, which is Tanya XF65, which is, again, a nice, a nice Russian green colour. Um... I want to use this one on the actual main hull of the um, of the book, so I don't want the missiles to match. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the main colour, and we'll see what it's like. Uh, if it's awful, then I can stop, wipe it off, and, and put something else on. But it's um, if I just show you on a on an old Tamiya pot, it's the colour is um, is spot on. I think. It's that lovely, it's that lovely Russian green colour we're looking for. So I think so. I'm going to give it a go. Uh, my my only concern with it is has it got bits and pieces and lumps in it? Um, because I because it was so so, you know, um, in such a mess. I could put it into another pot and stir it and check it's all got more sediment. But to be honest, life's too short. I really can't be bothered. So. We'll see how we get on with this and um, I'll come back when I'm ready to start doing some spraying. Okay, so do a little test down here. You can see it sprays quite nicely. So we'll see what it's like. We'll just go along the straight away. The first thing I can see is it's very thin. It doesn't cover very well. That's fine. That's a good thing. Just going to put this on very heavy to start with because I want to get some colour in there. And all the time we're doing this, we've got that XF27, that dark green, is showing through. And there we go, which will give us. Some variation in tonality, if that's the word I'm looking for. Where's my stand? It's over here. So we can stand that missile up in there. We can do another one. It's actually going down very nicely. I'm not a big fan of the um, AK Viejo paints, but over a a primer or another base coat they're absolutely fine but their, their biggest downfall is they don't bond to plastic very well so if you build your models and don't use primers and stuff um, in areas where you're going to be handling your model um, they're not ideal and like if you have to do masking You know, they're, they're easily ripped off if they're on bare plastic. Right, so that's them done. And um, to be honest, I'm really impressed with how they've come out. They're really, really good. Now, I was thinking about doing some pre-shading or post-shading and stuff on these. But I had a look at the references and it seems to me from what I've seen, no matter how dirty and battered or from what country these things are from, the missiles always appear to be pretty spotless. Um, they obviously don't leave them on there and drive them around in the sunshine and stuff and let them get weathered so really I'm just going to leave these as they are maybe give them a wash afterwards and maybe a quick dry brush just to you know a bit of artistic license but nothing too much um, we've also got uh, decals to go on um, as you can see all these numbers here they denote decals so we'll have to give it a gloss coat so I'm going to get these um, these unmasked now uh, if you are new to the hobby it's best to get your masking off as soon as you can because some paints will form like a skin on the masking tape. And what will happen is the, the actual paint, when you peel the masking tape off, you will lift some paint away with it. 
um, I, I don't know how, how to explain it. Um, if you can imagine two pieces of masking tape overlapping, then what you will have is when you pull one off, you might rip the one off. When you pull the one from underneath, you might, oops, you might rip the one off from above. I'm really doing this a bit too soon, I think. But um, basically, you want to be getting your masking tape off as soon as you can. Let me just peel that back like so. And it hasn't peeled any of the white away, which is cool. So that's a good thing. And then we've got the we've got the white the band here, which is going to expose our metal. And there we go. So you can see there we've got our metal exposed. Now this is what a wash is going to get rid of. This is where the tape is just straight off into the groove. So you can see we've got some silver there in the groove. That's what a wash will cure. Um, I want to now take the masking off of these veins if I can. Let's just unpeel that. Like so. And then we can do another one. There we go, just move around, grab that vein there, and then pull that tape off of there. And there we can see we've got our our um, book missile all painted up. As I said, I mean, I've got that round there. What I could do is just run around with a brush and just put some of the green in just to let that um, run into that groove, get rid of that silver edge. But once it's got a wash on it, it'll pick that out anyway. But um, yeah, really pleased with how that's come out. Looks really good. And they're going to look great sat on top of the, um, you know, four of them sat together on top of the missile, on top of the launcher. So, um, okay, moving on a little bit further now. This is about four or five hours later. Um, we've got our missiles now. They've had a gloss coat. Um, I've used the MRP Super Clear, which is a very, very thin, watery product. It's also very smelly, obviously. Um, it goes down quite nice, but I think I prefer aqua gloss. Um, but then this is a lacquer, so it's, it's going to pull down better than aqua gloss will. Uh, let's see what it's like with decals because that's the next thing now. So the reason I put a gloss coat on there is to get the decals on. Now I've cut the decals off the sheet here. You can see there's lots of tiny, tiny little bits of stenciling and stuff to go on. So we'll get all this on now and then. Um, and then we'll come back. I'm not going to do any filming of these decals because it's quite awkward and fiddly on a camera to do them. And I, I, I like to do them through a, through a magnifier. Um, I should use my Microset and Microsol. I've used Meng decals before and found them to be really good. Um, I used them on that little um, Whippet tank. And uh, yeah, I found them to be really, really good. So I'm having no fears about using these whatsoever, other than the fact they're absolutely tiny. So with the Microset and Microsol, I think they'll pull down lovely. Once they've had a clear coat afterwards to seal them in, I think they're gonna look lovely. So I'll get that done now, and then I'll be back. All right, so decals are on. This is like uh, 48 hours later now. And basically they're all on. Um, we can see we've got a little tiny bit of silvering in a few places, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Very strange. Now, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here. Something very, very weird has happened. I've brought you in a bit closer so I can show you the effect. If you remember, I gave these a, uh, a prime with the Ming Ammo One Shot Primer, which is the same as Stone or Res or the UMP stuff. Then I cleaned up a few areas and then gave them an overcoat with XF27 Tamiya, uh, thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinners. Then I gave them the final colour coat, which was the um, AK slash Meng MC235, wasn't it, the colour? Yeah, yes, MC235, the green. That was on there, so I left that a few hours to dry and then went over with the um, MRP Super Clear Gloss Varnish for a, um, for a clear coat for the, the um, decals to go on. Now, as you can see, it's not very glossy. 
and it looks like as the hours go by the super clear is eating into what's below it and it doesn't seem to be fully dried it's not it's not like that stuff that the, the viejo metallic color that didn't dry it's not sticky it just feels soft it just doesn't feel like it's going hard now that would probably be part of the reason for the silvering but something I did notice that I have never in all my years which is what's it now 50 years I've been modeling I have never ever seen decals attack paint but these decals and they're obviously they're main decals so I don't know if it's the decals or what but the, these rib bands here I don't know if I can find the one that's got it but I put one on and then I wanted to lift it off and move it because I had it a bit too far back here we go you can see it there now if you look there there's a mark okay the decal no setting agent nothing because I found that if I use setting agent it just sort of ran off because there was no surface tension to it so basically the decal was eating into the tacking the paint so when you peel the decal off it actually pulled some of the paint off with it I have never seen that in my life so yeah very very strange but the other thing that's very strange and very strange in a very nice way um, let's find the one with the best effect I don't know if you can see it but it's almost like the if you look in this area down here you can see that the super clear is kind of eaten into the green and given it like a wash just like a shaded effect if you can see this area down the center of this tube is more green than down the side of those fins and it's kind of given it up you can see it around here look you, you can see it's almost got like a post shading effect around those ribs so that is a result of using the super clear over the AK which could be used to your advantage I mean they now don't need any shading or anything it's done it itself but as I say, it's very, very strange. Now, obviously, I've got to overcoat these decals, and I'm going to use Aqua Gloss because I know that will go on and, and go off. Well, I'm hoping it will go on and go off. But the other thing I need to do, if you can see around this back end here, in hindsight, if I did this again, and if you were building this kit, this decal here is one piece, and it has to go over this rib here. Okay? So, as a result, it's kind of, it has to kind of go down, and it's, it's compound curves and everything. And it hasn't gone down at all. I've used Microset and Microsole and give it lashings of it, and it just hasn't gone down. So I'm going to go for the good old trusty um, Tamiya Extra Thin. But what I'm going to do first of all is just stick a knife blade into these corners where it's wrinkly and just give it a little scratch just so that there's really sort of nothing there. And even now, you see, this, this decal kind of feels... This is 24 hours this has been on here, and it kind of feels soft which is weird I must give the super clear a proper try because it went down really really nice and I think if I'm honest I think the problem I've got with the paint not drying when you look at the way it's kind of eaten into it I think it's using it over the AK that's had the that's, that's um, caused the problems um, I mean, I've certainly they're, they're both paints I've never used before the AK um, the main sort of AK paint I'm not a fan of AK paints anyway I love their um, they're real colours, but I don't like their Vallejo type bottles, the same as I don't like Vallejo. So now I've got some extra thin on the brush, and I'm just going to dab that in there and run it over the whole decal. And hopefully, with that in there, it'll pull it down and get it to settle. If not, I'll just have to do some sanding and beat it up a bit afterwards, after the matte varnish has gone on. You can also see what's very unusual. Normally when you do this, you would put a drop on and you wouldn't be able to touch it afterwards. Well, with this, I can rub around it to my heart's content. It doesn't seem to be affecting the super clear at all. So there we go. So that's that one done. So they've probably, uh, they, they've gone down now pretty much. So um, now we can just get on with the uh, the gloss varnishing. And for that, I'm going to use my old favourite, Alclad 2. I have recently bought this one, um, polyurethane gloss varnish from Viejo. And uh, I'm kind of almost scared to use it because you know of my success with Viejo. I don't really know why I bought it, if I'm honest. So with this stuff, um, main thing to remember, 
don't shake it okay um, if you shake it then you get all sorts of bubbles and stuff in it and it's not good so you don't shake it it doesn't settle on the bottom you can see there's no sediment um, so there is no need to shake it so what you just pour it straight in your airbrush and use it really and um, you can kind of slap it on and it'll just pull back in and dry it's um, very very easy to use wouldn't really suggest it as a final sort of gloss coat for your car bodies and stuff there is better stuff out there but it's pretty user friendly it's not very smelly i don't think it's very dangerous for you um obviously i'm doing it on camera now but normally i would do it in a booth um so really what i'm going to do is just sort of lay it on i'm just gonna go over like so and put it on pretty heavy and as i say it will pull back and what i'm looking forward to seeing is how it actually reacts over those over those dodgy decals. Okay, so just having a quick look, make sure everything's nice and glossy. Make sure we haven't missed anywhere. I've got a screen I didn't quite go over the nose. Um, so there we go. Now we can see straight away we've got white areas here building up around the decals. Okay, that'll probably disappear. But we can see I've got it on nice and thick. And there's a reason for that. It's because I've had issues with these decals with glossy bits so we'll see how that dries I think it'll be absolutely fine so the same again making sure I get the edges of the fins because it's easy to miss them There we go, that's that one done. Again, we can see the white areas building up around the decals. I think that'll disappear. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Uh, that's the beauty of Russian stuff. You can always um, beat it up a bit. I, I actually have a lot of respect for the Russian armour, for the Russian crews, because they don't seem to like waste their time, or not necessarily not saying it's a waste of time, but they don't spend their time making sure everything's clean and shiny and the paint's all lovely and matches every perfectly. You know, some of their aircraft are, uh, are terrible, <laughs> but um, you know, they, they still serve a function. This, they're made of Alcred, you don't need to touch the paintwork up. The other thing that's really good about this aqua gloss is you can put it over your over your metal coats, particularly um, alclad, and uh, it doesn't tend to affect the glossiness. If you want to see it work to a really good advantage, go back to my Saturn V build and have a look at the command module. And that's the that's the closest thing I've ever produced to something looking like chrome. So yeah, I was really chuffed with that. Now we'll look at the first one I did. We can see it's drying back. It's pulling in. The white marks are disappearing. So we can see that we're getting a sort of a glossy cut. And what, all this is doing is sealing the decals in so that we don't have an edge. And then when we put a wash on, it doesn't pick up the edge of the decals. And I'm also trying to hide these raised wrinkly marks in these decals down here which I'm hoping once I've got this on I can kind of mani manipulate the wrinkles out shall we say I'm just going to put some in here just to seal in these decals in the tail cones this is now seven days since the first part of this video so the first section of this video you watched I don't know 15 20 minutes ago whatever it was an hour ago um was actually filmed seven days ago today is february the 14th 2020 so happy valentine's day all uh, thanks for all your cards um right i can sense that all of you were going oh my god what are you doing you were putting that lacquer on that that varnish far too heavily well there we go there you can see the end effect and what they warn against is pooling now if you look closely here let's make sure you can see it in the light you may see on that fin there that's that's evidence of pooling. So that's where I put it on so heavy. Once this has had a matte varnish, that won't even notice. And what I could do, if I really am fussed about it, this is um, 
this is some 400 grit yep it's that coarse I could just literally roll over that and rub it away like so and that's gone <laughs> okay so you know really if you want to get a good coat of that um, aqua gloss on there you can put it on heavy and as I say if you do get any of this then you can deal with it and if we look at some of the others you know you can see that they're absolutely fine um, nothing wrong with them at all so we've got a nice heavy coat on there and it has actually disguised some of these issues around these decals here as I said to you guys a few minutes ago a couple of days ago for me but a few minutes ago for you the, these decals here they are one piece they're a band that goes over the over that ridge there um, if I were you I would cut them into two strips you know cut them into three strips don't use the middle bit and just use the two bands because they really don't want to go down they actually seem a little bit thick um, they're a little thick these decals you can see them under the gloss if you can catch that under light but um I can get it you can see they're quite thick under that thick coat of gloss you see that they're still standing up so um, anyway I'm happy with the way, the way they're looking so I'm going to give them a wash and I think I'm going to actually use a flory wash on them because it'll go into these grooves and I can then you know sort of play with it if I use a, an oil wash or something then um, it's sort of it's on it's on that's it so I think I might use a flory wash and then give them a matte varnish and see how they look so um let's get on with that okay so I've got my flory wash here this is very old this is more than 10 years old um, so this one here and what I do I keep a brush and I've got a piece of masking tape on you see I keep a brush only for flory wash it doesn't get used for anything else the reason being if you contaminate this with acrylic or cellulose or whatever thinners it kills it um, the way to avoid that is to pour some out use it and then don't pour it back in the bottle but I don't like wasting stuff so I just keep one brush dedicated to the flory wash so what I'm going to do is just literally brush this on all over like so and bear in mind this is going on to a gloss coat so it will kind of run away and just stay in the corners um, because the surface tension we get a bit of paper so you're messing my bench up the um it will just run into the grooves and ridges and everything purely because it's got a gloss coat if you want to get more of a a, a dirty weathered look with this stuff put it over a matte coat but you'll have to rub it a lot harder to get it off now i'm sure that you guys have all seen this before um there may be one or two of you that haven't but this stuff is it's a great wash especially if you're new to weathering and you're not quite sure where you're going with it um, and the reasons for that will become apparent when you see what the post treatment is once it's dried you basically you are completely in control uh, I mean obviously it's your model you're in control anyway but with this you can absolutely completely remove it um, you can put more on you can take more off you can do whatever you want and if you don't like it as I say you can just take it all off because it's not actually it's not actually going to stick to the surface it's not going to um, it's not going to attack anything you've got on here it won't attack the decals it won't attack the gloss coat it won't attack the paint it won't attack anything it is basically as far as I know with with some other unharmful chemicals I'm guessing it is basically clay in suspended in water so if you like it's probably no more dangerous than a muddy puddle <laughs> so uh, we all remember we loved, when we were kids we used to love playing in muddy puddles so there we go that's all you do is just brush it on all over like that and just let it dry and when it dries it dries to a, a powdery kind of um, finish all right so this flory wash has been drying on here for about eight hours now you don't need to leave it that long you can leave it for like half an hour or whatever so we can use a, um, a cloth like so so I've got a piece of t-shirt here um, 
a lot of people use paper towel. I don't like using paper towel because you get all the bits off it and stuff. So I like to use cloth rather than paper towel. And what we're going to do is just lightly rub over it and keep rubbing in the same direction. So, and if you get something a bit difficult, just wet your finger, rub it over it. And there we go. Feeling that you can wet the t-shirt. Obviously I'm dabbing it on my tongue, which is not hygienic or, or it's actually quite disgusting, but uh, hey ho. Um, and then you can just rub away like so. And uh, the other thing you can do is get a cotton bud, dampen the end of that, and you can rub that in there and get into all the nooks and crannies. And what I basically want is 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 actually hardly any weathering on these at all. This is really just for artistic effect and to sort of highlight the the areas like these lines around this um, silver band and down in the roots of these rear fins and stuff. Um, as I say, I'm not trying to weather them because on every single image I've seen, the missiles, no matter how clean or weathered or dirty or whatever the, the actual vehicle is, the missiles are always clean. So, as, as they would be, I guess. I guess they would have some sort of marking on them or, or something from where they've been loaded or transported, but I guess they're transported under cover. So, and the other thing is, I can imagine these things aren't sat out. They're not sat out in the, uh, you know, in the middle of open fields left there for weeks on end. You know, they'd be, um, they'd be in buildings, covered up, whatever. And um, I should also imagine they don't spend weeks and weeks traveling around fields and muddy areas and dusty areas with the missiles on board they probably get them loaded as required so there we go so that's what sort of effect I'm after I've just got some of the wash remaining down in the nooks and crannies just to give it a bit of a bit of a look you can see it's down in there around those fins and stuff and it, it just gives it a bit of a bit more interest rather than just the green and silver so that's what we're after there and you can see around there it looks superb around that nose cone where it stayed in that groove so we've got proper day of separation proper demarcation between the green the silver and the white so now all they need is a matte coat which I shall do in a second and finally we are done here's the engine nozzles and there uh, they've had a matte coat and here are the missiles they've also had a matte coat and they're just drying and you can see that now that effect that I was talking about where the MRP gloss has kind of attacked what was under it and it's given us that sort of wash look this has not had a wash other than the floury wash which is you know the grey you can see in the grooves here but this this area around here this this is this is all um this is all that effect of the MRP eating into the AK and uh, exposing the um, XF27 under it so quite impressive stuff um, I'm liking the look of these I really do like the look of them there's a couple of tiny bits of silvering in the decals I'm gonna mount them on the model and see how it looks anything that's there I can cut away put a bit of matte varnish in um, put some dust over it do something whatever you know I, whatever I need to do to get rid of it but um, as I say there was an issue with these decals I seem to always have issues with decals when I'm on camera I've been building models for 50 years and I've never had issues with decals but it seems that whenever I do them on here I get I get problems and like I say with this I don't know if it was the decals or if it was the MRP but when I put the decals on they actually attacked the MRP so very very strange uh, unless the solvent in the MRP had still not all come out and it was basically attacking the, the decals. Um, but the MRP gloss, I don't think I'm going to bother with it again. Um, these have had a coat of the MRP. You can just about see super clear matte varnish. And you can see from the state of this bottle how just how good the lid is. Um, and it absolutely stinks. So will I use it again? I don't know. 
I don't know. I mean, it's matte. Yeah, not bad. Um, but uh, if MRP are watching, the biggest downside, I mean, yes, they stink. Okay, all lacquer paints do. But these bottles are a complete and utter joke. Absolutely awful. Um, trying to get the paint out of them is just a joke. I'll, I'll do a video, I'll, I'll do a review and show you in there. It, it, you know, they've got these dropper tops like this and you, you know, you put it like that and it just drips out and you squeeze it and you get a couple of drips, but I'm squeezing as hard as I can and nothing's coming out and, and generally it capillaries all over onto the lid and everything. And um, it's just really, just really not a good experience at all. Awful design, awful, awful design. Uh, the bottles are too hard to squeeze and the, the hole's too small for anything to come out of and then a half of them it comes in all over the lid so um yeah i had an issue there so in future for my deco coat i'll be using aqua gloss um but there we go so that's the missiles done uh, i hope you've enjoyed this little in fact i'll lay them down here for you i hope you've enjoyed this little uh well not little it's been over an hour long video but it's quite um I've sort of done it quite in depth and in fact just to show you them finished I can pull this stick out of here get an exhaust nozzle and push it up into there it doesn't need glue it'll stay in there on its own you can see then the back end of that one is finished okay oh and on the back end of these I just remember I forgot to cover it um, what I did I went in with a um, a circular a, a piece of where is it now here we go a piece of um this is like 180 grit rolled it up and just went in there and sanded to get rid of that seam because it looks bloody awful when you look up inside and you see that seam so just sand away until that seam disappears and then uh, it looks much better and you can see that you can put the exhaust nozzle in just give it a nudge with a stick doesn't need gluing in and there we go you can see that's in there now so um yeah i'm happy Happy with how they've come out. Um, may as well finish them as we're on camera. And we've got some um, Storm Dennis battering away at us today, which is really nice. We had Storm Cara last week, or Kiara, whatever she's called. Um, and now we've got Storm Dennis. So, yeah, thanks for that. So, there we go. I'll put them with the mounting faces down so that's what you'll see from the top when they're on the back of the launcher and they'll be sat like that all four together so um yeah as you can see a little bit of silver on there we'll deal with that later so the book is now all primed and um i'm ready to sort of put out another part of that uh, i am also going to start another kit i am going to start an idf build in uh, um Steve Mottram's um, IDF group build so hopefully he'll respond to me at some point but anyway there we go so that's the missiles done thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it if you're still awake well done and um, maybe you've got a bit for this video maybe you haven't but um, thanks for watching anyway bye for now